Hey guys, I'm Casey with Honey Tree Farm. I get this question all the time. How do we grow the carrots? Um, do the pandemic and stuff. I'm gonna tell you guys what we do, how we do it. We're a market garden. This is what we do full time. This is how we make a living, selling vegetables. Uh, my wife and I run all of this uh, by ourselves. So I'm gonna go over what we do for carrots. Uh, bed prep, amending, seeding, tarping, uh, halfway through the growth, harvesting, all that stuff. Now, if you're just home gardening and you don't grow this way, if you have a raised bed or anything like that, it's still okay. A lot of the stuff will still be valuable to that scenario. The first step is to prep your bed. So you use a stirrup or whatever to take the weeds out, rake all the weeds out, and then now we're left with bare soil and we're gonna put compost and amendments on. All right, so this is alfalfa meal, a little bit of biochar and a little bit of Tennessee brown rock, which is the phosphorus. Um, our soils here in the southeast, we're in North Carolina, are really low in phosphorus. So I have done a soil test and amended correctly for the soil test for all of this. So this part of our farm is naturally just a soft spot, but there are plenty of hard clay areas that we've had to use this tool to break them up. This is called a broad fork. Stick it down in the soil like this and you're mimicking a deep tillage. You're, you're kind of going down into where the soil is hard and opening it. And when you do that, you allow oxygen down there for the microbes. And you also just manually loosen the soil. So you see how that's lifting? This is the tool you really need to grow carrots well. So what carrots really want is a, a loose, well-structured, not overloaded with nitrogen soil. If you grow a lot of greens or tomatoes or something that needs extra nitrogen, uh, planting carrots there probably isn't the best bet. All right, now that it's broad forked and loosened up, we're gonna bring the BCS over it and get it ready to seed. We use a BCS. Um, I'm probably going to put it at one inch, and so it's a tiller that you can set the height on and I'm going to go one inch down just to get, mix the um, very top of the native soil with the compost because the compost sucks, it's too dry, and um, that's what we're stuck with. That's just the way it is, reality, you got to adjust and adapt. to seed the carrots this is a jang seeder it's a precision seeder so it has different sized rollers that go in here and then there's two gears in here and you can switch these out with these up here and that gives you your spacing normally I would seed a hundred foot bed or 200 foot beds but uh, I'm just doing this part for the sake of the video if you don't have one of these seeders um, you can just do it by hand or use a different seeder this is expensive, it's like 400 bucks, and then these are kind of expensive, but planting one of these beds of, with carrots and selling it pays for the um, seeder, so it's a good investment. I'm gonna seed these at an inch and a half and do six rows, and so if you're, uh, if you're seeding by hand, just, it's tedious, but, because um, the seeds are really small, but you gotta do it if you want the carrot. All right, now we're watering it in and then we're gonna cover it with a tarp to hold the moisture. After you seed carrots, they have to stay moist to germinate. So if you put something over top of it, we use the silage tarps with the white side up. You can use burlap, you can use row cover, you can use an old sheet or something. 
but if the seeds dry out, they're not gonna germinate. They have to stay moist. Most of the time carrots take, they can take 10 to 14 days to germinate, but with this method it's like four to five, especially if it's warmer outside. Okay, so after they germinate, uh, they won't be this big obviously, but you will have smaller carrots and they will be like this. And so what's important with the carrots is that, especially in a bed like this that's planted so dense, is you want, to keep it weed free. So it really it kind of comes down to just hand weeding, like having to pull these out. And uh, that kind of sucks, but that's just the way they are. Depending on the variety, you're looking at like two and a half, three months till they're ready to harvest. Um, but you can harvest these at any time. Like you just saw the one I pulled, like this. This is still edible. Um, it tastes just like a carrot. It actually might taste a little better when they're smaller but it's not as much food. Along with that, some will grow bigger in the bed and faster than the others. You could pull the bigger ones first and then leave room for these smaller ones to grow. We grow carrots pretty much all year. Uh, last year, there was a few weeks where we didn't have them available because we had a six week drought and an extremely weak well. They grow better and they taste better in a cooler soil. So when you grow them dense like this, um, you get the canopy coverage which keeps the weeds pressure down and you also cool the soil down because it's shaded. There's been studies about carrots that um, test their tissue and these studies say, um, and I'm not the scientist so I'm just saying, that they soak in the pesticides and, and keep them in their tissues. So our farm is certified naturally grown and we don't spray things like that. But when you grow a carrot and you taste the difference, you'll be hooked. Uh, every so often I'll come through and check these beds and pull a carrot out to see how they're doing. There we go, that's a good one. These guys are developing pretty well in this bed. And we just got six and a half inches of rain this week, so these guys are really chasing the moisture down in the soil. If you have a rocky or clay soil, um, or a soil that is just lacking structure, we have a lot of work into these beds, a lot of compost. Um, close management of the soil and what it needs for amendments, um, not tilling, and uh, we do a little cover cropping and all that, so uh, it works. If you have clay or rocky soil, you don't have to grow this variety of carrots. There are short round carrots that will grow in those soils. Jesse at Rough Draft Farmstead has a video on that. I'll leave that in the description. He grows them. They're called Parisian Market Carrots, and there's a couple of round varieties, and those will also grow in containers. So I've read and been told I haven't done it, but those are options. If you can't plant like this, don't have the soil worked enough yet, or um, want to grow in a container. From so my understanding, this kind of root development on a carrot is, is more phosphorus and potassium and less nitrogen. So if you grow a lot of greens like we do here, we'll amend with something with nitrogen at the be, at the, uh, before the greens, and then when we Harvest the greens, we'll plant a root crop, and these uh, nitrogen is taken up. Nitrogen is responsible for green vigorous growth in plants. So this is a taproot, and you don't want green vigorous growth with a taproot. You want root development. So when they're ready to harvest, you'll end up with the bed like this. This, you can see the height of the foliage and the difference. With that seeding rate that I did and the variety, this is like 3,000 something carrots for 250 square feet. This is a pretty prime stage to harvest them. We sell a lot of carrots every single week. This size seems to be the one people like because they're still tender and they're not that hard yet. They're full of flavor. So for storing, um, I'm just going to show Elliot Coleman's book here. This is the New Organic Grower by Elliot Coleman. We have a walk-in cooler that we use every week for the markets and restaurant sales. We don't store carrots, we grow them all year. We're in a mild climate with a couple of tricks you can do that. So we've never needed, we've never needed to store them because 
they'll store on the ground here just fine. So good varieties that we grow are mochum, purple haze, um, white satin is pretty good. White satin's a carrot that can handle interesting spots. And we, uh, we don't grow the round carrots, but they're Parisienne carrots. Those are round carrots, so again, those are for the containers and heavy soils and things like that. And you can harvest them at any stage. Eat them however you want. You can eat the tops, the tops are edible. Yeah, I, I hope that helps you guys out. It's um, really, it's really just, they're, they're a lot of work, but they get easier over time and you'll, de you'll develop an intuition on them and then you'll get better at growing them. And that's, they, it's just the work. You gotta do the work. Yeah, we gotta fix up these chicken tractors. They're super rough. Filling up my microgreen trays. Doing 41 week trays. 41 trays. Yeah, we built these with uh, recycled or salvage material, whatever, at the farm we worked at. And um, they've held up, but they are rough. We gotta split these guys up now. They're getting too big. Coming through doing some weeding in the tunnels. The weather sucks really bad, so uh, I haven't recorded much because it's been raining and windy. And that's what we're doing. This, these kind of weeks happen. Kind of a sucky day, really. Can't really do much. Um, so I'm trying to make a new market display. It's the cherry tree I took down from our neighbors. And then just a crappy pine um, log here. Just um, use the chainsaw to cut it in so it sets in. Now I'm gonna try and um, put a piece in here to go across so there's two layers. The weather's kind of sucked to be taking care of these guys, but um, they're doing good. They're adjusting. Fresh grass, remove them twice a day. Uh, they got the heat lamp all night. There's two on in there and The greenhouse plastic help holds the heat keeps the rain off of them here We decided to get some harvesting done in the rain. So if it dries out tomorrow, we can get our things done Hi. This is what we've been working in all week We're going on six inches of rain now. Sorry, I couldn't record anything. It's so, so much rain. And we still had a lot of work to do, but let's check this out. So the rain gauge was full. We are a tenth of an inch short of six inches of rain. So that's a lot to deal with. And um, I've already basically almost ruined my camera once in the rain. 
so I uh, wasn't trying to do that again. But yeah, things are doing okay. You can see the real test is you wait a day or so and see if all your root crops split or you see how bad fungal issues get on your greens. So the greens that are tight, like this salad bed, it's probably gonna get yellowing on the bottom and I'll probably lose a good bit from harvesting it, but it's the way it goes. But that's also why you have successions planted. And the oak crap beds, which I always have planted in case we need more. But yeah, the other thing with the rain, uh, I got to see where all the water flows and where it flows like heavily. And so um, I know I previously talked about that permaculture idea with the pond and I still think that we're gonna go with that. But I'm actually gonna start the ditches right here, which is like halfway through the property. And the ditch is gonna run along this and split down back there. And then the water is gonna go along the wood line so the trees can soak it up and then hit the other ditches or swales is I guess the appropriate word. And then funnel back around the bees to the pond area in front of the bees. The amount of water that pooled up here was stupid. It didn't flood anything, thankfully, because we have a bit of a sandier top to our soil, but as I was harvesting carrots, I could see where the water was starting to pool up. So it's all stuff you learn along the way. The meat chickens did all right. Tons of extra work and time with them, making sure they're okay. The uh, tomatoes here, they were just, we had water flowing through this tunnel. That's like never happened before. So that's how crazy this rain was. They're all doing this, pushing water out. You see at the edge of the leaves. In a tunnel growing scenario, you can tell that the plant has enough water when it does that. So then you need, then you know like, oh, I should irrigate more or not. I am kind of worried about the fruit splitting. So there's a nice one there. We'll see, I'm not gonna irrigate them for a while. It's all part of the challenge. So this plot, plot three, We've always, had, we've always had an issue with it, just big time runoff in the walkways. And we tried um, leaf compost. That's worked pretty well, but when it rains this hard, it's still washed away. Wood chips will wash up onto the bed and we don't want that because it pulls nitrogen from the soil. Grass clippings worked. Squash is like, blown up after the rain that we had we had six six and a half inches mm -hmm. and there's like some little ones that are probably going to be ready this week well there's zucchini there that probably won't be ready this week but like some of the squash down here that one's probably going to be ready this week or next week and then there's a bunch more in there we'll probably be harvesting these like every day <laughs> All right, tree of the week. No one even, uh, no one guessed it. No one even tried. Um, this is a Chinese chestnut. So the American chestnut, everybody probably knows, had a bad blight issue. Um, it came into the country in the early 1900s in New York City, I think. But this is really similar to the American chestnut, but it's not an American chestnut, uh, clearly, because it's still here. Um, there was a blight, it's a fungal disease that wiped out all the trees in the, like the eastern part of the country really, but this was the, the chestnuts were the big deal for the forests around here. Um, these are actually kind of common in our area, surprisingly. So someone with a nursery around here probably had them. And I guess the nuts are edible, but they're not as good. And um, it's a really cool tree, it's really unique. Uh, it gives off a really cool like it's as wide as it is tall kind of appearance and it's different so we enjoy it these flowers are pretty unique too they have a weird smell they don't really smell that good i was talking about monoecious and dioecious trees that's the tree of heaven um, this one's monoecious so the um, male and female flowers are on the same tree when these have male and female trees but then these also get confusing because some of them can be monoecious and 
be male and female. <laughs> you can see that there. It's got a really cool appearance. So yeah, if you have memories of chestnuts or anything like that, um, and you want something like that in your landscape, you can plant this one. There is a chestnut works in their production. It's like cross between two other chestnuts and then this one, and they have a nursery of them. None of them have shown um, signs of the blight, so I guess there's hope, but that's decades out, I bet. But in the meantime, if you want a chestnut, that's what you get. All right, if you watched this far, um, the sales this week were great. Markets were awesome. The farm pickup was great. We have awesome customers. Um, it's the most we ever sold, and we're, like actually making a living growing vegetables now, which is awesome. And we just hope that we can keep it rolling, keep growing quality stuff, and and uh, people like it. The two tunnels did ship, so next week we'll be putting up the nursery and getting that set up like kind of at the worst time to do it because we have so much planting and the weeds are exploding but it's gonna be a lot of work i know the vlog was short on stuff this week really that's why i did the carrot thing too um but like i've said before we're just documenting what we're doing and um farming for real not farming for content so i tend to lean towards actually growing stuff instead of filming it uh, but anyways guys thanks for watching